in the landscape of World War II, where ideologies clashed and humanity hung in the balance. One man stood as a symbol of courage against tyranny. This is the story of Klaus von Stauffenberg, a German army officer. He was one of the key figures in the resistance against Adolf Hitler's Nazi regime during World War II. Born on November 15, 1907, in Jettingen, Germany, Stauffenberg came from a prominent aristocratic family with a strong military tradition. Early views on Hitler. Stauffenberg's views of Hitler were conflicted during this period. He vacillated between a strong dislike of Hitler's policies and respect for what he perceived to be Hitler's military acumen, before becoming more disassociated with the party after the Night of the Long Knives and Kristallnacht, which he saw as proof Hitler had no intentions to pursue justice. As a practicing Catholic, it was noted that the growing systematic ill-treatment of Jews and suppression of religion had offended Stauffenberg's strong sense of Catholic morality and justice. Assassination Attempt After several unsuccessful attempts by Stauffenberg to encounter Hitler, Göring and Himmler at the same time, he went ahead with the attempt at the Wolf Suzanne on 20 July 1944. Stauffenberg entered the briefing room carrying a briefcase containing two small bombs. The location had unexpectedly been changed from the subterranean Führer bunker to Albert Speer's wooden hut due to the heat on this summer's day. He left the room to arm the first bomb with specially adapted pliers. This was a difficult task for him as he had lost his right hand and had only three fingers on his left hand. A guard knocked and opened the door, urging him to hurry as the meeting was about to begin. As a result, Stauffenberg was able to arm only one of the bombs. He left the second bomb with his aide-de-camp, Werner von Heften, and returned to the briefing room, where he placed the briefcase under the conference table as close as he could to Hitler. Some minutes later, he received a planned phone call. He then excused himself and left the room. After his exit, the briefcase was moved by Colonel Heinz Brandt. When the explosion tore through the hut, Stauffenberg was convinced that no one in the room could have survived. Although four people were killed and almost all survivors were injured, Hitler himself was shielded from the blast by the heavy, solid oak conference table leg, which Colonel Brandt had placed the briefcase bomb behind and was only slightly wounded. Stauffenberg and Heften quickly left and drove to the nearby airfield. After his return to Berlin, Stauffenberg immediately began to motivate his friends to initiate the second phase, the military coup against the Nazi leaders. Joseph Goebbels announced by radio that Hitler had survived and later. After Hitler spoke on the state radio, the conspirators realized that the coup had failed. They were tracked to their Bendlerstrasse offices and overpowered after a brief shootout, during which Stauffenberg was wounded in the shoulder. Execution. In the early hours of July 21, 1944, Klaus von Stauffenberg, along with fellow conspirators Werner von Heften, Friedrich Fromm, and Albrecht Mertz von Quinheim faced the firing squad in the courtyard of the Bendler Block military headquarters in Berlin. The execution was carried out by a detachment of soldiers under the command of Colonel Otto Skorzeny. The men were shot, and shortly afterward, their bodies were unceremoniously dumped into a shallow grave. Legacy After the war, a United States intelligence officer, Ernie Blake, who was involved in interrogation of Nazi officers, went on to establish a ski area in Taos, New Mexico. He named a squire run on the West Basin Ridge Stauffenberg. After von Stauffenberg, as well as three other runs after the names of other German officers who took part in the assassination attempt. Oster, von Tresco, and Fabian. 